The Unshackled Waves, episode 23. Unshackled Waves podcast. I'm Tim Wilms, back for another interview show for this week. Our guest for today is Stephen Templer from Advance Australia Wear, which is an Australian Patriot Facebook page which shares news and memes about Australian values and the state of our nation uh, several times a day. It's a very active uh, Facebook page and a lot of its commentary is very witty and to the point. So we thought we'd invite Stephen on the show today to talk about the Facebook page and the state of Australian society in general. So Stephen, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me, Tim. Great to be here. And I should, uh, uh, before we start, point out that today is Friday 20th of January and it's uh, 6.20 Australian Eastern Standard Time, which means it's only a few uh, hours after the deadly car attack in Melbourne's uh, C- CBD, where three pe- three people have been confirmed are dead and uh, twenty people uh, are injured. Uh, so far, we uh, the police haven't provided uh, much information. Uh, they they held a press conference at five pm where they said that the, the uh, per- perpetrator of it it was deliberate. He was known to police. Uh, he had had a history of uh, family violence, uh, uh, psychiatric illness and drug abuse. Uh, they, uh, they say that it's not a, a terrorism related incident, but still we don't, we don't know the person's name and this still is a, uh, a breaking story. And it's pretty shocking that this has happened in a city such as Melbourne. So I thought we'd just start by uh, yeah, discussing this story a bit. And yeah, it's, it's pretty shocking. Yeah, my, uh, my, I was at uh, work and my uh, uh, wife actually contacted me to tell me that this was uh, happening a couple of minutes after the uh, event uh, first went to air on, on TV. And uh, it's, uh, uh, as, as we were actually d- discussing just before we started this program, it's, it's a very telling uh, 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 to our state of our society at the moment where something like this five years ago it would have been seen as, a, as an amazing tragedy and, and uh, no one would have uh, possibly known what's going on. Now, of course, we don't know the guy's name. Uh, uh, we don't know whether he had any contacts with, with Islam whatsoever. But what is more telling for me is that it, how our society has changed in that uh, uh, as soon as this happens, we have a lockdown. We have people, uh, all, all the... Uh, office buildings being evacuated. Uh, we have people, uh, police roaming the streets with semi-automatic rifles. Uh, this would not have happened five years ago. So irrespective of whether or not this turns out to uh, be terrorist related at all, it is certainly in, indicative of uh, the effect that uh, Islamic terrorism has had uh, on our society and, and on, on, our, on our psyche, on, on our, how jittery we can all get when something like this happens. It's very telling. Yeah, because we've seen the, the Berlin truck attack and the Nice truck attack, so it does look remarkably similar or like a, a terrorist uh, incident. And even uh, if it you know, doesn't turn out to be terror-related, because they, they say that there's no links to terror organisations, which means that they haven't found any actual links. We, it could be that mm. this uh, person might have declared to ISIS, but yeah, we still don't know at this stage. But uh, a lot of the, the news presenters have rightly pointed out, even if it's not Islamic terrorism, it's still a, terror, a t- terrorism incident because, you know, it's terrified people. I mean, Melbourne's... Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah, it's a... It's a first world city, and, and it's an incident to inspire to inspire terror in, in the in the general public. It it will it will do that sort of thing. So. Yeah. yeah, you don't yeah. expect that that sort of thing to, to happen in Melbourne. I mean, uh, uh, no. you can you know if you look at the there's footage of the of what the guy was doing before uh, he he went on this rampage. It's and he's doing donuts in uh, Flinder, uh, outside Flinders Street Station. It's it's unbelievable. 
Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, I know that area very well. I used to, uh, I actually used to live on the corner of Flinders and Exhibition Streets in in the centre of Melbourne. I was there for a couple of years, and uh, the amount of people there, the amount of opportunity uh, that that he would have had. Uh, it, it, we're very lucky that uh, the casualties were were relatively few compared to what could have actually happened. And it's also worth pointing out the reason why a lot of people suspect it could be terrorism is because we're not being told much information. I mean, for example, there was the attack on the Australian Christian lobby uh, last last month where they say it wasn't politically motivated, but we still don't know who the person was or what his actual motivation was. So you can understand why people, you know, were a bit, uh, uh, you know, aren't believing what they're being told. Oh, absolutely. The, the, the amount of uh, censorship and uh, or lack of uh, transparency that our government gives uh, on, these, on these issues, you know, just shows how uh, concerned they are about, uh, it, it, you know, the, the rise of Islamophobia. You know, not that I truly think that that's anything that they should really worry about. I, I'm not worried about uh, people... Uh, you know, going to get back at, at um, uh, the is, is the Muslims on in Australia. When, when something like this happens, the the biggest uh, blowback they get is someone goes and puts some bacon on their carpet or something like that. I mean, it just shows if if that's the extent of uh, the retribution that the the Muslims are actually going to face in Australia. It, it, I think it's actually a display of how how ridiculously and overly tolerant the uh, and peace-loving your average Australian actually is. Yeah, uh, that's exactly right. And this is still a developing story, so we will, we will obviously know more about it uh, in the coming hours and days. Uh, the Unshackled uh, already has a, a story up on the website, which is, which is being updated as new information breaks, so we'll, we'll certainly keep our, our readers informed about about what what's going on, uh, so we might yeah, very uh, good. we might continue with the uh, the interview show now. So uh, talk, talk about talk about you now. Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, your Facebook page is called Advance Australia Wear, which is obviously a, a play on the national anthem Advance Australia Fair. So tell us why you decided mm -hmm. to call it that, and what inspired its creation. Uh, well. To, uh, I started the, the, the page, uh, well, I started the, the initial steps towards creating the page very soon after Turnbull rolled Abbott uh, for PM. Um, I, I, I've been a, a conservative voter, a, li a liberal voter, you know, all my voting life. Uh, although I was, uh, you know, you know, I didn't agree with every last thing that they, they were going, I found that they generally aligned with my... Uh, with my personal values. Now, when it came to the last Labor government we had, uh, which um, uh, I, I don't think I'm Robinson Crusoe in, to, in believing that uh, the Gillard-Rudd uh, government was an absolute farce. Uh, and uh, I, I think it was a, a disgrace uh, politically to uh, uh, d disrespecting the average Australian. Uh, but it, it also made fools of us worldwide we, the, to, to have uh, the ridiculous circus that our uh, political elite uh, turned into. Now, uh, fast forward uh, six, uh, sorry, about tw 12 months after um, uh, Abbott got in and the, the, the so-called adults in the room who, who had now gotten in charge went and did exactly the same thing. They just, they looked at the, the polls and they just uh, lost their nerve and they decided to, to roll uh, Abbott over it. And um, I was just absolutely livid. N not only did I think that Abbott was, on, on the whole, I, I think Abbott was uh, quite a, a good guy. Um, he did some very silly things like, I mean, getting the whole dames and knights and things like that. And, and doing a thing like biting into an onion or, or whatever, I thought, yeah, okay, you, you've done some some stupid things, uh, but he didn't deserve to be to be rolled in that way. I thought that was uh, absolute uh, political suicide for uh, uh, the 
the Liberal National Party and it showed out in the next election. They went from uh, an incredibly strong position uh, and the incredibly strong position they had, they, they, they brought out a, a real horror budget. Uh, and I mean, the fact was, if you if you're going to really start correcting the the economic uh, the economics of Australia, you wanted to do that in your first budget when you had such a majority. You wanted to get that pain. You, you wanted to rip that bandaid off real quick, get the pain over and done with. Then once you got once you got things back under control, then you're able to maybe loosen the purse strings or you know or you know start to give back some uh, on some of the things that you'd taken away beforehand that, it was a very sensible thing for them to do as harsh as it may have been uh, they, they might not have sold it very well but uh, it, it was a bit of an issue there but when they that when they decide when Turnbull out of really obviously nothing but sheer naked ambition just uh, takes an opportune moment when it, when the polls are down slightly, he's going to stick the knife in and install himself as as prime minister. I just thought it was uh, he was a, a, a traitor to Australian democracy, and uh, uh, not only that, he was stupid in doing so because uh, he saw what happened to to Rudd and Gillard. So, so I really felt that both parties had lost their way. And so that that was the where we came up with Advance Australia. Where you know where where to now? Uh, we we have a real lack of, of decent pol political leadership in in Australia, and I wanted to point that out, and uh, offer some um, some guidance and possibly some uh, uh, things for for Australians to really look for. This is what we should really be looking for in our our next lot of, lot of political leaders uh, and to get rid of these self-serving political elites who are who, who are just blatantly out there for, no, for nothing but themselves. Yeah, it's, uh, I certainly, uh, with regards to the leadership change, I, I believe that, yeah, Abbott was uh, a disappointment as Prime Minister, but it's certainly the case that Turnbull has proved uh, worse, especially on the on on the cultural issues, but yes, I think you are definitely correct that there doesn't seem to be um, in the major parties at least m uh, many good, strong, uh, you know, conservative leaders. No, that, that's right, and it's really uh, a, a groupthink dominated by polls, and uh, we we can all see uh, where the polls. Uh, will head when the when in certain directions where the actual majority of the people uh, can be going in the absolute opposite direction. We, we've seen that with Brexit. We've seen that with Trump. Uh, you know there is uh, truly a silent majority out there who uh, are not being paid heed to whatsoever. Now let's go into um, more detail about about your Facebook page. It now has over mm. uh, four thousand likes, which is which is a pretty uh, fair amount. So tell us how you grew the page. Did you have a strategy in mind, or was the growth just a, a surprise to you? Um, it it was a, a surprise that it it grew so so quickly. Um, I mean, I know there are other pages out there that seem to have grown. Uh, at much quicker paces, but I've tried to uh, be very strict with the messages I give out, uh, and uh, so I didn't actually have a, a strict strategy in mind. But I try to uh, use my experience uh, with debating and in the in all these topics. You know, like we've got the the culture wars, religious discussions, philosophical issues that uh, that that affect us all. Now, I have a lot of experience uh, in these issues, and I've got a lot of experience debating uh, uh, with with people. Uh, you know, from um, the, the college uh, university level uh, down to uh, just simple. Uh, online forums and, and things like that. I've got a lot of experience in that area. And I, I hoped to try and use uh, uh, some really good tools uh, and, and and to equip other people to show people that, you know, the, the uh, arguments on behalf of uh, the, the right side of politics, the arguments are there. They're, a lot of the time our... our our people, the people on our side, they know that something's wrong. 
they can see that this other argument that they're being presented is wrong, but they can't quite put their finger on it and they can't articulate it as well as, as what they would like. Now, um, I have the ability to articulate a lot of these things and I, I spent a lot of time uh, doing, doing that properly and I wanted to put that in video form to give people these uh, arguments so that they can hear a few things that I that I say and then they can just take a few of those things along with them and the next time these uh, particular issues come up that, that they will have some of those tools. You know, so one of the particular ones that really uh, grew my page was that uh, I think it was my um, second video that I actually put up was on uh, the gun debate uh, in Australia and uh, you know uh, what has uh, transpired since 1996 and, and how we compare to America. You know, it's a very interesting debate and I, uh, I knew that if I could just give people a couple of little things that would actually uh, bring the whole topic into focus and give it much more context. So when people say that, uh, oh, we don't want to be like America, well, you know, wh what does that actually mean? You know, did you know that if, if we look at the stats of gun violence in America and compare them to Australia, if we take out four cities, if we take out Washington, D Detroit, Chicago and New Orleans, if we take those four cities out of the stats that the rate of gun violence in America per 100,000 people is almost exactly the same as what it is in Australia. Yeah, and when you give people that sort of information, uh, it, it, it does what, what I like to term is I like to inoculate people and inoculate people against silly leftist arguments, the, the rhetoric that they bring out, these, these apparent truisms, you know, uh, there's, there's massacres, you know, every day in the United States and, you know, there's just bullets flying everywhere, which is, is just plainly not the truth. But if you give some people um, just a, a little bit of truth that's easy to understand and something that uh, it is uh, easy for them to, re to remember, you're inoculating them from uh, a whole heap of other rhetoric that will come their way later on in life. So the, what I really want to do is to combat bad thinking, bad rhetoric, etc., and reframe the arguments to show the shallowness of the arguments of, you know, the, the so-called progressives. Yeah, I definitely think that yeah, the the, the uh, memes and news that you you post, it's all very uh, to the point. It's got a it's got a simple uh, logical message. So I certainly think that yeah, it's that that's one of the reasons why you've you've grown so quickly. Now, uh, do you have any plans to expand Advance Australia Wear from just a Facebook page to other parts of the internet? Uh, well, I have been advised. Uh, that, I mean, yeah. You know, Doing it this way and having ha, having this sort of following on uh, Facebook has been great. Uh, whereas previously, uh, I've been you know battling and debating and in all di all sorts of different forums. Uh, I've never had the, um, uh, the the issue of what what do I do with a following on something that's actually as volatile as Facebook. So uh, Facebook is is actually going to remain the main focus. However. Uh, I, and I do have plans to make the page itself better, add more videos. Uh, I would like to start a traditional page, uh, you know, blog page or, or uh, web page, mainly as a bit of a backup to the Facebook page because, uh, as I said, Facebook can be quite volatile. You never know when you're just going to uh, offend the wrong person and then all of a sudden your page is deleted for yeah. 30 days or, or whatever. You know, and it's... It's very dangerous, but I mean, you know, Facebook is a private enterprise. We are on Facebook at Mark Zuckerberg's uh, uh, express wishes, or if he wants to get rid of us, he can get get rid of it. There's nothing we we can do about it. Uh, but um, if he was able to ban us from, or if anyone was able to ban us from the entire internet, that would be an entirely different thing. You know, the internet is really part and parcel uh, of uh, a forum of free speech. Uh, it, Facebook, you know, we, we do have to be 
a bit careful. And, uh, you know, with some of the things that um, I've seen, some of the things I've been encouraged to put up on Facebook, I've I've rejected because I think, you know, it's, it's really pushing the boundaries too much in, in certain areas. And, um, uh, you know, I mean, I don't want to say it's, <coughs> excuse me, I don't want to say it's, um, you know, a matter of uh, being uh, um, self-censorship. I, I don't, I don't believe uh, in self-censorship, but by the same token, we do truly have to respect that Facebook is not our property. Yeah, it, it is uh, the property of uh, really Mark Zuckerberg and uh, you know, and the shareholders, and they they that it is private property, and you can do what you want with private property. I can't tell him what to do with it. So uh, Facebook at the moment is going to be the main focus to, uh, focus at the moment. I'd like to expand the topic range a little bit as things go on. Uh, and eventually, I, I really want to have a library of videos that people can watch to see uh, how to argue a particular topic uh, logically, or, or see how I argue a, a particular topic logically, and see whether or not there's something there that that they can use for themselves. Yeah, the main reason that I ask that question is because yes, Facebook has been known to to shut down. Uh, a lot of uh, right-wing Facebook pages. So I often ask uh, people, people like you, around these Facebook pages. You, you know, you should have a should have a backup, whether it's a blog or an an, an email list. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's it's definitely sort of a bit of a balancing act. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, I mean the same goes for for YouTube as well. I do have a YouTube page, which is a, which really just has a couple of the videos that I've put up on uh, a Facebook, but I really haven't concentrated on on YouTube at all. But the, I mean, the the same goes there. I mean, um, you you got to have backups, and then you got to have backups for your backups. Unfortunately, in in this day and age, where um, the left are going to be uh, uh, so uh, diligent in uh, harassing and and uh, trying to shut you down as much as much as they can, you know, and unfortunately. Uh, they've gone away from traditional liberalism and uh, uh, they now no longer seem to believe in free speech whatsoever. For, uh, as long, uh, unless, of course, it's their speech, then then they're free to say what they want. <laughs> yeah, uh, too right. Um, now, one of the things I wanted to uh, uh, discuss with you, now, reaching people on the internet and gaining their attention, it's a lot different from how the traditional media has done it. Uh, memes appear to sort of become the new way of communicating political messages, or maybe be perhaps because our, our attention spans are so much shorter. Do you agree that memes are now, ha are now having the, the largest impact on, on, on influencing people? Yeah, it's um, the the videos that I put up. I, you know, I put a lot of time in them, and, and I think they're great. But I really think the most powerful thing is a good meme. Yeah, you know, and I mean, a lot of people these days, oh, you know, talk about meme wars. I'll bring on your memes and things like that, uh, and really trying to uh, say that, that these are a lower form of communication. However, I, I think they are very valuable, and if you do them properly, they can be very powerful. Um, uh, 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 honestly, I think memes are, are great, uh, but um, y the people that don't like them, I, I find it's usually w when there is a meme that exposes their flawed reasoning. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, instead, of, instead of attacking the, the, the logic that's, uh, and reasoning that's shown in the meme, They'll attack the meme, you know. That they'll attack the messenger, uh, and uh, and not the message. Uh, and you know, supposedly that'll that'll do uh, that 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 makes their argument for them. You know, and of course it doesn't. You know, it's it's like an ad hominem attack. You know, you can uh, bring out some uh, fantastic logic, and then people say, "Oh, but you're a white guy," you know, and you know, it's just an ad hominem attack. You're you're uh, creating a, a, a false issue, you know, just because I might be a white guy or I happen to, you know, have be uh, uh, pink and purple polka dotted, uh, it, it has no bearing whatsoever on my argument. Is my argument any good? You know, so I, I don't like the people who just attack the memes. I think they are a very powerful tool. Um, and also, uh, one of the things, they're good for arguing because you get to cut through key issues 
uh, very quickly in something that people can get in uh, in a nanosecond. They've got it. And I, I regard it as really a high skill to come up with a really good meme. Um, C.S. Lewis actually said uh, that if you can't simplify a complex idea so that the average person can understand it, then it's most likely that you don't understand it yourself. So, you know, this is where, yes, we are simplifying things to the, you know, the lowest common denominator, uh, but if it can't be simplified down to that level so so that people can can get it, then it's very possible that you don't either you don't understand it yourself or what you're trying to say is not actually true. If it's true, it can be simplified. And I, I believe it is some if something is true, it can be simplified right down to to the level, the simplicity of, of a meme. Yeah, and th and that's where uh, a, a lot of the uh, power of them lies. Yeah, if so if somebody attacks uh, attacks you based on you know they tell you to check your privilege or uh, you know something like that, you know that if they're not attacking your argument, then uh, you know their their response is not really uh, something to worry about. Yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. And uh, uh, a lot of the times we do get hung up uh, with people who are, are going to use ad homonyms against us. Um, but a, a lot of the time, I, th I think, uh, and a, a lot of the people out there are campaigning uh, on our side of politics, we do get to, we, we get hung up a little bit sometimes on these sorts of issues, you know, and we really want to uh, get and say, look, no, 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 we, we, we're telling the truth here. Uh, you're, you're attacking me and, and we get uh, bogged down in these sorts of arguments. A lot of the time, I think we've got to uh, realise that the person we're speaking to, uh, we're never going to convert. You know, they're, they're never going to see our point of view. A lot of the time, what we've got to do is uh, point things out simply and clearly and just leave it there. It's the other people who are not necessarily uh, convinced, who might be sitting on the fence. Uh, they can see for themselves without you having to uh, get yourself all riled up. They can see for themselves that this other person is uh, making uh, an ad hominem argument and that they haven't really won. They can see that the, the previous points you made actually do hold water. Uh, yeah, it's it's those people that we we really uh, need to be going for the people who are sitting on the fence. Um, very early on, when when I started to really get in, involved in the culture wars and started debating uh, with these things, I I would want to refute every last point that the person the other person came up with. Uh, you know, they they'd, they'd come up and. and they'd come up with a whole list of things, you know, I, I, I would say, well, you know, uh, something against same-sex marriage or, or, or something like that. And they'd, they'd come up with a whole list of uh, rhetorical uh, truisms in response to, to my, to what I'd said. And then I felt this urge that I had to uh, respond to every last little point. Now, as you, you, you go on uh, and over the years, and I mean, cause I've been doing this for, you know, near on 20, or so years now, uh, it, you, you get to realise that um, it's no use refuting every single point. Uh, it, it's good enough uh, and far less time consuming and it's, it's better for, the, for, for you as a person to, to just look at their argument and pick out one crucial point uh, and, and one crucial fault in their logic and point that out to them rather than feeling as though you've got to refute every single point that they've got. You, you don't have to convert every single person to your way of thinking in every encounter. It's enough to put, uh, uh, just a, uh, I call it putting a stone in their shoe, okay? You, you point something out that they've got faulty logic in somewhere and, and then uh, allow them to, 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 to walk around with that stone in their shoe and it will bother them.
you know, and other people will see it. And then it, it, it has a, a way of uh, growing, uh, having a snowball effect from there. And you, you see people's attitudes do change over time with just a, a, a little truth that you can put in there. And uh, I've seen uh, a great effect. I have a, a number of people who would argue with me uh, tooth and nail and just gradually over time, I just kept on with putting this little stone in their shoes and, you know, now they're on our side out there, you know, arguing for, uh, for, for you know, the, the, a worldview, uh, uh, what we see in the classical uh, conservative libertarian sort of uh, ideology. Yeah, definitely. Uh, no, uh, knowing when to engage is is, is certainly uh, a key to you know winning, uh, winning people over. Now let's talk about uh, a, a, a politics in general. Now, um, so uh, I guess we should ask you about your political philosophy. Uh, you've described yourself as a conservative, but how do you define uh, you know being a conservative or being of the right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. um, well, I I am a, a devout Christian. Now, that is probably the foundational uh, center of my world view. Now, because of that foundation of my world view, I I therefore believe in objective truth. I believe in uh, objective. Uh, and universal morals. You know, I believe that if something is morally right for, uh, for for you and I today, it's morally right for other people in other cultures uh, through all through all, all throughout history. Uh, as a as a Christian, I believe that the universe is ordered. I, I believe that there is reason. Uh, uh, so logic and reason are. Uh, are something that that hold true. They're, they're universal truths, on which we can uh, uh, then find out uh, further further truths down the line for who we are as human beings. How, how are we to uh, act? Do we actually possess uh, human rights uh, as uh, uh, rights that that are innate to humanity? Or are they collective agreements? Okay, so uh, I believe that, uh, that that human rights exists innately. Okay, we, we we have them as part of who we are. You have those rights because you're a human, not because a collective or a community has arbitrary arbitrarily decided that these are going to be our our rights. Our, our rights as humans are not endowed to us by a government, okay? They are uh, superior uh, to the authority that a government can give. Now, uh, having that as, as, as a foundation of, uh, of what I believe reality actually is, that leads me on, I believe, necessarily to uh, a, a libertarian way of uh, of viewing uh, a, a human's actions and responsibilities and rights within, within the community. And uh, I believe, uh, yeah, yeah, just w going through these things logically and, and also looking at how things work out throughout history, uh, I believe that uh, we, we should form governments to be at the citizens' behest. They are our public servants. Uh, they are there to uh, uh, enhance and uh, engender human flourishing, the, the, the flourishing of its citizens. Uh, it, it is not there to uh, be, a, be a, an, an ogre and interfere in every last point of our, uh, of our lives. Uh, that we, uh, because we have these rights, uh, it is our responsibility, and uh, we should be able to exercise these rights free of government interference. And th and that goes through you know many different areas, of course. So uh, I des I describe myself as a conservative libertarian. So uh, I'm socially and culturally conservative, you know, in regards to things like you know. Uh, 
same-sex marriage argument and, and things like that. Uh, I, I have a very conservative point of view there. When it comes to uh, economics and uh, the role of government, I find myself being uh, a libertarian. The, the government should be there to interfere uh, as least as, uh, as possible. Uh, I believe uh, in free market and economics. I'm a great uh, follower of Friedrich Hayek, uh, Thomas Sowell, uh, and some of these great economists that, that have shown time and time again uh, that government uh, regulation and interference is some of the sources of uh, the greatest ills that we can uh, that, that we ever face. If the government just got out of the way, the free market would do very well at handling things themselves, you know, but uh, governments being governments and democracies being democracies, uh, f further down the track, we end, we end up seeing governments uh, going for power grabs, you know, it's just human nature that we have people in power, they crave more power. Uh, we uh, and it's actually uh, while well, I'm thinking about it, it, it's it's one of the the beauties that we we don't recognise of the American system. Uh, now, for all America's ills, uh, it has a, a great sense of uh, human rights. They, they have the Declaration of Rights. Uh, they have a constitution. That, that they have. Um, uh, the, the, the amendments to the Constitution, the list of amendments that they, they all know very well. And they know where their rights begin and end. And they know that those rights are not to be uh, impeded by the government. Uh, in, in Australia, unfortunately, things aren't that obvious. You know, the, we sort of feel as though we have rights that are given to us by the government. Uh, and uh, the government uh, sort of sees itself as uh, the arbiter of, of right and wrong. And, uh, yeah, in, in, to a large extent, I, I just wish that the government would realise that uh, uh, leaving us alone to, to, for the free market to do a, as it will do, and it will do it the most efficient way possible, uh, and leaving us to do things uh, by ourselves, uh, we, we will do things uh, many times better than what any government program will do. Yeah, it's definitely good you've got that deep uh, philosophical underpinning to, uh, to, uh, to your beliefs. Uh, I consider myself a libertarian, and so yes, those names such as Hayek and Sol are uh, yeah, very, uh, very fam familiar to me, and I, yeah, I definitely think it is, is good to, to read some of the, the great economists and uh, political philosophers. Now, um, my next question is, uh, are you involved in any other political activism apart from your Facebook page? Uh, do you team up with um, uh, other politically active conservatives? I've actually done uh, a couple of videos for a, uh, a, 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 another uh, Facebook-based uh, um, team of people, uh, it's with Silent Majority. Uh, now, if you look up the Silent Majority uh, webpage, they're, they're very active uh, and uh, they've also involved, uh, I think it's with the, uh, a, a new, relatively new political party called the Australian Conservatives. Now, I looked into their um, constitution and, uh, and things like that very carefully. I was very happy to get involved with these guys. Although it's it's a, a nascent uh, group, it's it's relatively small. I mean, they they have you know thousands of people. My, my mainly my involvement has come through uh, their their main Facebook page, which is Silent Majority. Uh, so I mean, if you go through have a look at the Silent Majority Facebook page, you would certainly uh, find that find them there. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I did a bit of investigations on them and, and had a look at them. And uh, from what I see, although they're quite small, uh, I see uh, a lot of the issues that have come up with a, a lot of the micro parties before, uh, where they, they're you know they come up with a great flash and they're gone with with just a uh, as just as quick. Uh, a lot of those have uh, been the result of uh, a lack of forethought 
uh, a lack of uh, uh, decent groundwork, which these guys have actually put in, and and their aim is to grow slowly but surely. Uh, but I, I've looked at their at their uh, constitution for their political party, and I see uh, strengths uh, there that uh, it it would pay uh, other political parties, you know, similar to to One Nation or or whatever. Uh, it, it would it would pay them well to look at what these guys are doing, uh, because these guys are, are doing it doing it right. So I've done a, a couple of videos uh, for them. But apart from that, uh, Facebook, uh, sorry, uh, Advanced Australia, where has has been my main thrust. Uh, whereas previously uh, I was just speaking under my uh, my own name on other forums and in other environments and. and uh, where I was invited to speak and things like that. Um, it, it was really just under, under my own name and, and I would pick and choose. But since doing this, I've, uh, you know, and still having to make a living and things like that, uh, I've really had to, to knuckle down and uh, focus on, on this and give some of these, some of these other forums uh, away just, just for them, you know, uh, time's sake. Yeah, oh, well, uh, your answer leads into my next question uh, quite uh, quite well, which is uh, uh, f uh, how do you see the state of Australian politics? Obviously, um, you said you're not a big fan of uh, 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 Malcolm Turnbull. Uh, so how do you see the Australian political scene at the moment? And um, yes, uh, some of the other minor parties that are emerging at the moment. Yeah. Um... Uh, let, let me say, I don't know uh, who who came up with the quote originally, but uh, it, it, there's there's a quote that says, that, "May you live in interesting times." And um, now, let's just say that now is a good time to be alive. It's 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 very interesting times. Uh, the last uh, ten or so years have actually been quite depressing, where we've seen this continual. Um, gradual but steady march onward of the 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 regressive left uh, and we're, we've seen uh, loss after loss you know just uh, one piece of legislation after another just going down and and we've been retreating and retreating and re retreating uh, and then all of a sudden with the way the world has gone uh, and I mean, I'm speaking specifically, you know, to the to the most obvious examples. There, we've got Brexit, we've got uh, uh, Trump, and uh, the rise of Islam, and and things like that. Uh, I, the way I see things now is that, uh, in particularly in Australia, uh, it's a bit of a powder keg, a bit of a powder keg awaiting the next election. Uh, now, I think the next election will be a, a very uh, telling thing, uh, we've seen what's gone on uh, over the uh, the rest of the world, and a, the Australian uh, patriots and the the Australian right and the Australian libertarians and the Australian conservatives who have so much in common uh, with each other uh, are building up really uh, ahead of steam, and I think that uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Uh, we've seen um, the micro parties. Uh, have gone from strength to strength over the last couple of uh, elections. Uh, but I, I really don't think we've seen anything yet to, to what is going to happen in the next election. Uh, and it is just plainly obvious that our uh, political, uh, uh, cultural uh, uh, elites are, are just completely unaware of the groundswell that is actually there. Uh, they just seem to be just living, living in denial. Um, I, I honestly think, I, I don't know whether the Greens will die. Uh, I mean, you know, one can live in hope, uh, but uh, I, I don't think that, that they will they will totally die. But I, I do think that they will uh, wane on the, on the vine. I, I think both major parties are going to uh, have a real shock next election uh if uh and this is where uh, i'm indebted to uh simon dennis from silent majority um if, if his predictions are right uh going off his the the stats that he goes off uh, he's, he's a real statistician he's, he's very good with this uh if he is right uh 
I, th I think it's going to be very hard for the Labor or the Liberal Party to govern in its own right next time round. Now, I don't think that that is a recipe for disaster. I actually think that that is a recipe uh, for the sort of renewal and sort of change that is is absolutely needed. You know, so uh, as far as one nation is concerned, um, I'm I'm hopeful. I, it's it's obvious that they've learned lessons from the last twenty years. Uh, yeah, if you asked me twenty years ago, I, w I would not have necessarily been a fan of One Nation. I thought they they had a couple of good things to say. Uh, I think they've learned a lot a lot of lessons, and I think they will come through a lot stronger as long as they can hold it together. Uh, which again brings me back to my previous uh, answer to a previous question. Um, the, the one thing that concerns me with One Nation is uh, not their specific policies, uh, not the direction they're going. That doesn't concern me. I, I think now, finally, they're on the right direction. Uh, what does concern me is um, their ab ability to hold their structure together. You know, I, I think uh, possibly their, their structure needs to be uh, looked at and their constitution needs to be a little bit more robust uh, to, to, to make sure uh, that they uh, don't end up losing the, ga the gains that they've made. Yeah, I definitely think that the, the Liberal Party is beyond saving, and I definitely think it's going to take a, a, a significant, you know, minor party from the right, whichever it might be, to, you know, uh, re-energise the Australian right and actually bring back some, some common sense to uh, Australian government. But it, we, we certainly hope that, yeah, next election, that the right can certainly uh, find, find its voice. Now, um, based on the description on your Facebook page, uh, you see it as important to take on the left and the elites. Uh, can you describe in your own view about why they are such a threat? Um, yeah, I, I, I think they are a great threat. Uh, and I th it's, it's a bit of a complicated uh, question. I'll try to simplify it as, as far as I can. Uh, the, the people of the progressive left, there are the people in the progressive left that really know what they're doing. Uh, and and they, they've had a plan right from the beginning. There's also uh, uh, the, what I believe the far majority of the progressive left, which have uh, been hoodwinked by uh, this re the rhetoric that the progressive left comes out with. Uh, and that, that can be seen particularly with, with, with certain examples uh, you know, for instance, same-sex marriage. The, you know, the, they come out with a rhetoric, "Well, love is love," and and it's all about equality, isn't it? Well, I mean, that is such a uh, a uh, superficial uh, non-argument, uh, but uh, that uh, it, it but it convinces people. It convinces people who are not really willing to think about it, or who haven't been exposed to uh, decent or proper arguments against it. But really, uh, what we're facing is uh, the result of what happened in the 1960s. Uh, and we have the Frankfurt School of Thought, uh, where we have a, a group of philosophers coming out of Frankfurt in Germany uh, who uh, really were very nihilistic in their thoughts. Uh, and they came out with a, a, a view of reality that we commonly would term postmodernism. Now, postmodernism is a rejection of uh, objective truth. Uh, ob objective, you know, is uh, objective truth doesn't exist. Everything is relative. Uh, and uh, they had a view on history where history could be, uh, instead of being seen as something that, that actually happened, everything becomes uh, interpreted in regards to a power play uh, between, uh, you know, minorities, it's black versus white or, uh, you know, the, the class warfare, you know, between the haves and the, and the have-nots. And uh, the, they aim to redefine reality as, as we see it. Now, um, 
when you look into the, these people's beliefs, it, it's absolutely based on abject nonsense. Uh, but they have been very good at crafting this nonsense, nonsense and uh, it's surrounding it with r rhetorical nonsense that has that, that, that sort of enables people to suspend rational thought and to just go on with it. Yeah, if you had said 20 years ago that um, we should let uh, two blokes get married and and to actually consider that to be as valuable and legitimate as a man and a woman getting married, it, you, you would have been laughed at. You know, but with you know, a few rhetorical tricks that, that they've repeated again and again and again, and uh, the uh, the bullying tactics that they've they've used, they've managed to convince, you know, possibly quite uh, possibly a majority of Australians that uh, same-sex marriage is, is morally neutral. Yeah, you know, that, that's uh, quite a feat to do that without a logical argument. Whether or not it's whether or not same-sex marriage is uh, actually um, morally neutral or, or not. They've convinced the majority of people that it's it's actually fine, without a real logical argument. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, Hitler would have loved to have been able to to do uh, to to have such an effect in such short a period of time. But th these people have done it. So, um, so this we, we have we've had a concerted effort. Uh, from the Frankfurt School, from these postmodernists, to break down our cultural norms. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, not a, not just uh, our notion of the family, but also our notion of nationhood uh, the, and the re reinterpretation uh, of of history. Uh, to to reinterpret someone who is patriotic has been reinterpreted as someone who is necessarily a racist. Uh, uh, and, a, and a bigot and, and to redefine someone who takes pride in their country, who takes pride in Anzac Day as someone who must necessarily be uh, a, a white, hate-filled, uh, irrational person uh, just out to s s keep other people, you know, uh, under the thumb. You know, we're, we're, there, it, it's nothing to do with that whatsoever. You know, I mean, we're quite right to have uh, pride in who we are as Australians. We're quite, quite right to have uh, pride in our country and, and in our culture. We're quite right to believe that our culture is superior to other cultures. Uh, th this cultural uh, cultural equivalence that they go, go on with, it, you know, is it, just absolute rubbish. Our culture is better than most of the other cultures in the world, apart from what you see, in, obviously, in other Western countries. And it can be verified. It's, it's something that can be proven that our culture is better by the mere fact that uh, people from uh, other cultures are moving to our culture. They're desperate to get in to Australia. They're desperate to partake in the, the Australian culture. We are not desperately trying to go to uh, Libya. We are not des desperately, we don't see people desperately trying to get into Afghanistan or Kenya or uh, 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 Chile or Argentina. They are coming to us. Uh, th that is an absolute vote in the superiority of our culture. If there was another culture in the world that was better than ours, well, we'd be going there. If there was a if there was a country in Australia that I thought was just vastly superior in culture, and 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 benefits the, to what I could get in Australia, well, I I tell you what, I'd I'd either want to go there, or I would want to try and emulate that country in Australia. I would try and make our country like that other country. You know, so it, it's it's. Oh, it's easy to verify that uh, uh, cultural e equivalence uh, is, a, is, a, is a dead end. So uh, uh, this cultural Marxism that they're trying to uh, get us into uh, is, is really a dead end, but people have been hoodwinked, hoodwinked into it, unfortunately. 
Uh, uh, but I uh, often argue that uh, the vast majority of Australians are, from all demographic groups uh, are on the side of conservatives and patriots. Uh, so why is it then that the left and elites seem to have so much uh, power and influence? I, I really think it um, comes down to being organised better right from the very start. Uh, if you look at uh, what happened in the 1960s, as I mentioned before, one of their first uh, avenues, uh, their, their first ports of call were the universities. They used the university students and it was the, uh, when I say this really came about in the 1960s, uh, it, I mean, it, it really came, it started in the 1930s but it started through the elite and it was a, a trickle down effect. We had these professors coming out from uh, Germany in the, in the 1930s uh, and they started uh, to uh, infiltrate, uh, for want of a, a better word, uh, the universities. And so our educated elite uh, w would uh, have, have this particular worldview and then they would inculcate it. And it really started to get momentum in the 1960s. Uh, instead of just having a, a few university lecturers, the majority of university lecturers. Now, uh, in a country such as Australia, that was only a couple of thousand. But then, of course, we had thousands and thousands of students going through every year who started to take this on board. And it's really uh, the cultural elite from our universities uh, started there. And now we come 50 years down the track and these university students, as, as they were then, are now uh, CEOs. They're, they're now our politicians. Uh, you know, we, we see a great difference between the, uh, the politicians that we have today to what we had with John Howard. Now, of course, I mean, you know, I, I've got a lot of differences with John Howard, but we do, we do notice when we see John Howard and the and the way he uh, was Prime Minister of Australia, there's, there's a great generational difference between uh, what we see, what we saw with him and what we see today. We look at Daniel Andrews down in, in Victoria, uh, who's openly uh, welcoming uh, transgender uh, education into high schools and primary schools there. Uh, uh, I mean, this this sort of thing boggles the mind of anyone uh, of uh, of an older age group, uh, and uh, it, it boggles the mind of myself and a lot of the younger age group, quite quite frankly. But but that that this is possible is because of what happened in the 1960s, and these uh, people have been uh, basically sent out from the from the from their churches of left-wing indoctrination and are now uh, part of the mainstream society. Yeah, cer uh, certainly you're correct. The, the, uh, the left, a lot of their power comes from that they've taken over yeah, our, our educational institutions and also our, our government institutions as well. So part of, part of our fight is mm. to well, either remove these institutions or take them, take them back over ourselves, but that's a whole whole other strategy. Um, now, do you, my final question, do you see the current battle over Australian culture and society as part of a global fight to defend and preserve Western civilization? Yes, certainly, certainly. Um, in a world that has uh, shrunk via the internet, uh, all these battles are shared by all Western nations. Uh, immigration issue, issues, for example, hit all Western nations. LGBT issues, uh, transgender issues, all these sorts of things. Uh, all these are problems of, a we of Western society and is actually a result of our success. Illegal immigrants want to get here because of our superior society. Transgenders uh, and uh, these fringe elements have so much say in our society because we have the luxury of pandering to these issues due to the success of our society. Now, if we didn't have such a successful society, 
and people were actually really concerned about where their next meal was coming from, we wouldn't have time to be talking about transgender issues. Should we, we, we have uh, uh, same-sex change rooms and things like that in our schools? Uh, th these would not be topics of discussion if we were actually concerned uh, th about uh, an invasion of, of, our, of an angry neighbour or uh, is our economy uh, going to survive next week. I'm sure they're not having transgender conversations uh, in Kenya or in uh, in uh, Libya, uh, you know, where they're more concerned about the fact that their their nations could uh, degenerate into into civil war at any moment. Uh, I'm sure Venezuela's you know, not really concerned about same sex marriage at the moment when uh, the, they have uh, uh, people not being fed properly, you know, uh, uh, which you know, consequently is a result of uh, their socialist attitudes over the last uh, 10 or so years. Uh, but it, we have a luxury in the, in the West and we can, we can pander to these issues and, and it's, uh, it's, it's a problem of our, our, our own success. Yeah, that's, that's certainly, um, you're definitely right about the internet, how we, we see exactly the same thing happening in uh, America, Canada, uh, the UK and uh, all the, the mainland uh, Euro European nations. So it's certainly we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we have a society today that uh, has re rejected objective truth and morality. We've accepted a, a false and dangerous view of equality rather than equal opportunity. Uh, all these things can endanger our society as we lose sight of what were the unique disciplines that gave us our success. Now, n namely, the Judeo-Christian worldview that actually made uh, the, the scientific revolution possible. You know, without uh, an understanding of uh, what made the success of the West, uh, we're at, at, at in danger of actually losing it. Yeah, you know, and uh, it's 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 very typical. If you don't, uh, w when a person's hungry for success, and and they really try, and they guess, and then they achieve it, uh, and then their 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 children don't really realise where the success came from, and they're the ones who will lose it and squander it. Uh, you know, if if we lose lose sight of what actually uh, are the foundational. Uh, bedrock on which Western society has been built. If we lose sight of that, uh, which we seem to be doing uh, at a great rate, uh, Western society will, you know, eventually be lost. You know, it, I think it's it, it's foolish for us to to look and see how successful we are, and to say that that uh, is going to be forever, just because. You know, it, it's not. It is something precious, it needs to be preserved. Uh, this is why we have armies. This is why we fight. This is why we have uh, constitutions, you know, so that we can preserve the foundations uh, and the freedoms that, that we have. Uh, if we lose sight of that, uh, Western society is a goner. You know, it won't be in five years, not going to be in 10 years. It might not even be a 20, 30 years, you know, but, um, you know, I, I would not place bets, you know, to see what's going to happen in, in another 50 years. Yes. Now, I'm not going to be around, but my children sure as hell will be. I might uh, find out. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, well, that's uh, all we've got time for on today's, uh, today's show. So thank you, Stephen, for being a guest on, on the show. We, we had a great, great discussion there. Yeah, thank you very much. And of course, I would advise all of our listeners to check out the Advanced Australia Wear Facebook page. You'll certainly find it to be both uh, entertaining and informative, so it's definitely worth following it and having it in your uh, Facebook newsfeed. So we wish you all the best, Stephen, and keep up the good work, and I'm sure we'll be in contact again soon. Thank you very much. All the best, Tim. Bye-bye.
All right, that's the show for today. So I'll be back next week for another review show. Uh, news is now developing uh, quick and fast now, so we hope to keep you informed about it all. Uh, reminder that voting closes soon for the 2016 Unshackler Awards, and, all, and most of the categories are now up on the website for, for you to vote on. Don't forget to sign up for the email list at theunshackled.net slash subscribe. Uh, also, uh, uh, if you would like to support the show, uh, you can become a patron on Patreon, donate via PayPal, or sign up to be an advertiser. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and also the video version on YouTube. Uh, so thanks once again for listening, and we'll see you next time.